Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero 60. Now this is not a Hoovies Garage clickbait type video. This is genuinely a car that we've had for 11 years now, nearly 12 years. And yeah, we've sort of been, not intentionally hiding it from the channel, especially anyone that sort of joined in the last 12 months probably don't know that we have this. And actually it was quite surprising seeing the reactions of some of the guys that come to the member meetup about two weeks ago when you realized that we have this in our arsenal because we did get it out of the cover to have it on display. Um, yeah, we are beyond emotionally attached to this vehicle. Um, yeah, it was bought uh, with pure passion back in 2009 and definitely not with common sense because if we were to sell it today, we'd probably lose close to $120,000 on it. I probably shouldn't uh, keep it from you guys for much longer, but it is our BMW E60 M5. Now this car, we bought this back in 2009. Actually, let me get the cover off. Let me get the cover off because it is still a really good example. And yeah, we actually used to have, many, many years ago, quite a good little business. And I think at the time I was about 24, David was 19. And what do you do when you start making money? Well, you wanna buy cars that you can't afford. It's what every business does and that's why finance exists. And uh, yeah, that's what we did. So instead of taking a wage or a proper wage back in 2009, me and David thought it'd be a good idea to basically get a $100,000 loan on a car and uh, have a real company car sense. Yeah, the, the BMW E60 M5 at the time, it was four years old and it was a proper, I can still remember the first time we got to drive it. Like it was a proper dream come true rolling around in a V10 as a 24 year old. David was 19. Can you imagine him? I mean, he's crazy now when he was 19. This, this thing's seen rev limiter a few times, but it has been a very, very good car. We got it in 2009 with 40,000 kilometers on it. Uh, it was purchased through the local BMW dealership. It was a premium BMW vehicle. So it had the full like two year warranty service plan, everything, even though we got it secondhand and it was immaculate. Um, it had 40,000 kilometers on it. It has about 125,000 kilometers on it now. And me and David have done everything in it from car rallies, track days, street races, burnout comp, anything you can imagine, maybe not burnout comp, but we have done massive burnouts in it. It has been an amazing car. And I think in that entire time that we've had it and we've done the best part of 100,000 kilometers, over 11 years, it's crazy. Over all that time, the only thing that's really failed on it were the throttle body actuators. Um, yeah, I reckon, oh, and the clutch. We did do a clutch in it as well. But I know for a fact, in that whole time we've owned it, we haven't spent $4,000 on this. And considering it was a near brand new car, it was four years old when we got it, it's crazy how good of a run we've had with it. And we've been sort of keeping it aside because everybody sort of gives these a really bad rep online as being an unreliable engine and it's been one of the best cars we've ever had. And we have, well, David was 19. It used to just do race starts everywhere. I think we did over 100 race launches on the original clutch, um, and it just loved it. Raced 600 horsepower GDRs and smoked them. Gotta go first. Oh. I think the M1. The things that this has beaten is insane. And I still I still remember getting in it and it's got air con seats and it's showing a bit of age. But yeah, man, it is such a nice car. And it just flies. And still to this day, when we get in it, it is a genuine adrenaline rush to drive. So anyway, what are we doing with it? Well, four months ago, um, our old man was driving it and this was bought by the company. There's no two ways about it. It is a company car. Um, but yeah, our old man was driving it and the charging light come on the dashboard. It appears that the alternator is failing and I'm hoping that it's just bushes in the regulator. So I'm gonna try and get the regulator off the alternator today, see if we can work out why it's not charging instead of just forking out thousand plus dollars for an alternator. But that's the plan with today's video. The other thing I'm thinking, if we can get it running properly, 
those lightweight coil wheels with the semi slicks on it will actually bolt straight onto this car and should clear with no issues so i was kind of thinking if we can get it running for rolls next weekend i might take this instead of my 335 because i still haven't done anything and i'll just be spinning up again i kind of want to run this against david's car before david's car gets too powerful i think um i think this in stock form is going to be pretty close to where his car sits right now and these are rapid they are one of the most underrated engines in the world. I think people don't really realize what 500 naturally aspirated horsepowers are like. However, we have a charging problem. So let's see, we charged it up for the, the meat. Let's see if it's got enough juice to actually get us up to the shed. Oh. No, battery's just gone flat. All right, I'm gonna have to stick it on charge and we'll try and start it again hopefully shortly. So while it's been on charge, we did give the X5 a really good clean, and man, she's looking good. But hopefully now we've got enough charge in the E60 to get it up in the shed. So let me take this battery charger off, and we'll give it a crank and see if we can get it up there. Oh, oh it's hot. It's really hot. Right, let's see if it's got enough juice to run. Oh, still didn't start. Okay, she's alive. Now I reckon we've probably got, I don't know, a minute of run time before the battery will be too flat and the car will just stall. I think so anyway. So let's get it up and onto the hoist. Forward driving. And I know this car looks really dirty, but it is just dust. The uh, covers that we have, oh, how good is SMG? Oh, really? SMG through a tight gap? Not fun. Who left that vacuum there? It was me. It's up on the block. Okay. Oh, we really need a bigger shed. Okay, so this is where it gets tight because can't really go back much further. This is the biggest car we've ever tried to get on this hoist. And we're getting errors as things are going flat things are going flat as the car is going flat. Oh gosh, she's a big girl. Alright, I think we should be lined up. I think. Let me get it up in the air. Well, that is it on the hoist. Guys, this is the first time we've had this vehicle up on a lift. Well, up on a lift when we can have a proper look at it. Uh, I'm gonna start at the back and let's just see how bad it is. It's interesting. So we've had this car from 40,000 kilometers. Looks like there's a rubber boot gone on the ball joint on the control arm. There's also a pen on the stub axle. There is on that one as well. I wonder why there'd be pen on it. Hmm. Also, a dust boot gone. Not the end of the world, but not ideal. These tyres are knackered. I think we got them in 2012. It hasn't had a lot of use since 2012, to be fair. 
we used to pretty much daily drive it until we did the clutch and then when we did the clutch it was off the road for about six months and then it's been babied pretty much ever since oh got a nice bit of oil coming out of the pinion seal on the diff i did suspect a few oil leaks because where we used to park it in the warehouse ah look at that the diff is leaking onto this shroud Ugh. okay so we've got diff oil wonder if there's any diff oil left in there we will see exhaust all looks good actually i'll show you guys the only real mod we've done to this we straight piped to the rear end of it um and this thing sounds sick it sounds better than andrew's black one and i think it's because of the what design of these tips it looks they're all cheap ebay tips but it does sound good going a bit rusty there not the end of the world but the actual genuine exhaust is good we have got every genuine part we took off this nothing too scary up in the gearbox but we can see oil trails where is it coming from i might have to take this shroud holy shit look at that look at the oil far out in this bad okay we might not be just doing the alternator okay that's the engine oil cooler which is these big these s85s have a nice big front mounted engine oil cooler i'm guessing that's leaking because it's covered in oil ah, it could just be the fitting it appears to be oil at the top there i don't know if GoPro is going to pick that up, but hmm, hopefully it's just an O-ring on the connection. That'd be nice. Something to check. Might have to get this under tray off. Let's have a quick look at this front suspension. Yeah, we'll get, we'll get the under tray off. We'll get the under tray off. I'm starting to think I might do a separate video on the alternator or the regulator, um, just because this is getting on a little bit. And <laughs> I might, I should do it properly instead of rushing it with this car. This is sort of... Oh, I don't know what you guys think. I, don't get me wrong, I love the M54, but this thing is special. And it's, we've sort of got family memories, business memories. Um, I think I mentioned at the start, like we paid, we financed it, but unfortunately you ended up paying the finance off and we lost about $100,000 on this car if we were to sell it today. Um, yeah, with all the interest and everything paid on it, it owes us about $150,000, which is just painful. But over 11 years, I guess it's not too... Eh too outrageous and that's split between the family businesses so it's a bit of a weird one but yeah it's definitely got a bit of a soft spot in our hearts and although we haven't used it much really the last five or six years at all um we do get out and drive it around again and it still makes all of us smile and we do all when we can afford to want to fully restore it back to new um so it's a bit of a weird one anyway let me get this under tray off and we'll see how nasty all the stuff under the engine looks because we've not done one gasket one seal we've not done anything for an oil leak on this car the whole time we've had it so it's, it's gonna need something it's gonna all right so got the under trays off and they're a bit more complex than an m54 one um like that thing is solid and it's all aerodynamic and shit um i had a quick look up here as well because i was pretty concerned about this oil cooler leak and i had a feeling they are prone to needing oil coolers and it's i think it's just because of the location and people hit curbs and shit um but looking at it as closely as i can i actually think the oil's leaking out of the o-ring on the oil connector i think that is actually the cause of it because there's oil all the way up there and then it's just covered the whole oh, i'd have to go probably speaking up but it's covered the whole oil cooler man it's a big oil cooler um so that's gonna have to be remedied but i don't think that's gonna be too expensive or too time consuming just take the front bar off to get to the fitting uh, i got a little bit of a coolant leak coming out of the drain cock which i was aware of a coolant leak but i was expecting it to be a bigger issue that's really good news and then yeah there's a little bit of oil weeping around the gearbox i mean this thing has never been cleaned so i reckon i reckon it's actually just the main gearbox seal and a degrease and it could be another five or ten years before it's an actual issue but she's all pretty clean it's better than i was thinking when i first got up on the hoist i'm like this is not going to work for roll racing um and i hope i mentioned at the start of this video this has been one of those videos i started filming like nine hours ago and uh, yeah just things haven't gone to plan i'm gonna end it off there and get on to the alternator first thing uh, hmm, i'll get onto the alternator in the future probably sometime tomorrow I'm hopefully going to do a 0-60 on Clint's X5M tomorrow. Um, but 
yeah, let me know what you think of the old E60 with the V10. Um, like we felt so lucky when we got this car back in 2009. Um, as I've said, we've completely done our nut on it financially. It's like buying Bitcoin at the top when we got this even though it was still a hundred grand less than it was new. Yeah, these when they were new were like $260,000 in Australia. Um, but yeah, it is just an absolutely mega super saloon. We friggin' love this thing. Got so many memories with it and it's been a bit nostalgic. You might've picked up on camera, like even just looking at it, just so many, so many good times we've had in this car. We've met so many people because of this car. It's crazy, it's crazy. Um, yeah, definitely love it. It is something that will be in the family forever. And as I said earlier, as we get time and money, we will fully restore it. We've sort of stopped driving it heavily because it's really due for rod bearings. Um, and it's something we wanna do on the channel. But again, it's just, we've gotta prioritize what's going on. Um, but yeah, I kinda wanna take it to, I kinda wanna take it to roll racing. Uh, if I can get these oil leaks sort of fixed in the diff and the oil cooler, and the alternator fix, we might get it for roll racing next weekend and give Dave's M5, his supercharged E39, a bit of a comparison because I reckon they're gonna be close. This is a weapon of a vehicle, it is. Anyway, I'll end it off there. Let me know your thoughts on the car. Let me know if you wanna see it at rolls or if you'd rather see the M54. Um, I hopefully I mentioned at the start of the video, the only reason I don't really wanna take Black Beauty over there um, is it just spins up and until I've got these Decent wheels and decent tires, not even those, until I've got the tires sorted. There's probably not much point taking it because it's just gonna spin up again. Um, yeah, I was really hoping the LSD was gonna make a bigger difference, but to be honest, it just breaks loose with, it's got so much power, it'll just spin up those two wheels effortlessly anyway. Yeah, we need some better rubber, but we'll get there. All right, guys, nat it on, as always. Nostalgia, oh, special car, special car. Vote below if you want to see it with headers and a tune. Yes, that's what I would like to see. And if we can vote between me, Dave, and our old man, maybe we can make it happen. Maybe. I don't know. Probably should do the rod bearings first. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, it's actually pretty clean. Pretty impressed with it. it does not look like an 11-year-old car that's been thrashed. We look after. All right, guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.